welcome to the channel Cold Couple. We're going to show you how to run OBS on your Xbox One. There are a few videos online, but I found that a few of them don't really go into depth of much of how to set up OBS. They show you how to um, use it, but hopefully we can uh, go a little bit deeper and help you guys out getting this OBS running. OBS is open broadcast software. It's a free piece of software for anyone who wants to record games for gameplay, um, YouTube, if you just want to watch your games back. Um, it's a really good tool, it's f totally free. And yeah, I mean, like, uh, capture cards nowadays are what, £150 to £150? So these are a really good alternative for anyone who just wants to try out and see how it goes. One of the main things I'd recommend doing before you start using OBS if you're running on a laptop, which I am at the moment, um, when I use my Xbox One on my laptop, I'd say recommend plugging it in to the mains, having it plugged in, and also, uh, if you can, use an Ethernet cable. This will eliminate any issues you would have over Wi-Fi. Currently, I'm on Wi-Fi doing this demonstration video, but when I'm playing on Xbox, I'll always have it connected to the Ethernet and the power, because you will find your processor is going to get driven very hard with OBS. It's a a power consuming software as well as using the Xbox One through the uh, Windows 10 so those are the first two steps I'd say plug it in power and Ethernet cable then what you want to do is go onto your Windows 10 search box type in this PC right click your PC and go to your properties and you want to make sure that your uh, computer is completely compatible with OBS I'm running an i5 processor on a HP G6 Pavilion laptop. Uh, I do have a computer at work with OBS on it and that really struggles to capture anything above the bitrate set what I have on this set. I will go into that later on but make sure you've got a good processor i5 or higher and also as well what's important is to notice, notice your uh, system type so you need a 64-bit or a 32-bit OBS is compatible with both um, when you download that you'll see that but this is a 64-bit PC with an i5 processor so we should be good to go so once you've checked your spec of your PC what you want to do is go onto Google load that up and then type in in your search bar OBS that will take you to their website here it is here open broadcast software click that there's two options on OBS website is the classic version and then there's the studio version at first I did download the classic version but as of using the studio I wouldn't recommend downloading the classic it's not been updated since November um, it just seems more user friendly the studio version so you can read the differences here and here but I'd say go for the studio version obviously Apple Mac Windows so download that so once that's downloaded if you go into your search bar, type in OBS, and you're going to get two options there. So again, 32-bit for a 32-bit system, and 64-bit. Before you open these, if you right-click and then open file location, it's going to take you to where they are on your PC. If you're running the 64-bit, what I'd recommend, you don't have to do this, but personally I would, is just to delete the 32-bit, because then that eliminates any issues you're going to have, maybe selecting the wrong one by mistake it's just not going to work if you're on a 64 bit so delete that that completely eradicates that from the PC so you should be good on that one then to put this on your PC don't drag this out of this folder for some reason it messes it up again maybe it's just my PC I don't know but if you follow these rules then you shouldn't have no problem so if you right click it and then copy and then what you want to do just paste it onto your desktop mine's already there so there's no need for me to do that and then you can pin that to your taskbar by right clicking again pin to taskbar and you should have it down here so obviously once that's on your PC you then have to click this it will open up obviously mine is currently actually recording what we're doing right now so you should see a window like this here you'll have your scene and display if this is blank it's very simple you right click in this source in the scenes and then add and it will add a scene and then 
over here, right click again, add and display capture. As soon as you click that display capture, you're going to get on the screen up here your display of your laptop or screen what you're seeing. You can move this around to see the size. I have mine quite small because then it takes less processing power. But as you can see, there's your screen completely mirrored. So before you go and record, you also want to go in your settings. So the only important part here is your output and your video. Unless you're streaming, you'd have to sit, you know, to play around with that because I don't stream, so I just mainly record. So what you want to do is click on your output. Here's where it's important for your PC. So importantly is your video bitrate. So you want to make sure that's as good as it can be for your PC. I found the best way to do this is to go onto YouTube and select a video of 1080 or 720, it doesn't really matter, and then record it. I think as default this is set at 2500 bit rate. So watch a video, record it, and then go up uh, 500 increments. So then you go to 3000 on that bit rate, then record it, and then Again, if that records identical to what you're seeing, go up again 500, 3500. I went up to 4500, well, I went up to 5000, and that's when my recording started becoming very jittery. So then I went back down to 4500, and that's where I found that the processor and the PC is manageable at recording that bit rate. So it takes a while to find that one, but once you've got it, you're pretty good on there. So, record quality, same as stream. Obviously, you need to set your record path. Audio bit rate, I think that's set at 160. I've just got mine at 224, just to give it a little bit extra. Encoder, the software, that's just, to leave that as standard, that doesn't matter. And there's another thing, recording format. I think when it's defaulted, it's uh, flash, flash videos. Um, I'd recommend dropping that to MP4. Just saves you a little bit of grief when you uh, record the video and you have to use VLC player or some other player than media player which is built into Windows. So click that at MP4. Let's go to video. So here you will get differences in PCs depending on what your quality is of your PC. My PC can only manage 720, which isn't a problem. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I've just matched mine output to exactly what my PC is showing. Um, you can, if you have a 1080, you can choose whatever you want, 720. Um, you find if you if you go on to 1080, you might have to change a few things in the output. But again, it's it's all down to adjusting it. Once you've got an idea to how to set it up, it's pretty straightforward. Go into output and keep messing around with the settings until you find a suitable setting that you're happy with. The downscaler, again, I can't click on that because I'm actually recording, but I think it's set to uh, 15, 16 samples per second. Put that up to 32 and leave it 30 frames per second and that will all be absolutely fine ready to go again hotkeys is where you can uh, adjust the key keyboards so, so you can have quick links so you can just click enter to start recording or whatever I've got mine as enter that's all I changed as soon as I click enter on my keyboard it will start recording whatever I'm doing advanced again not really much changed in there so not too much to mess about with <coughs> so once you've got all those settings everything is absolutely good to go. You are recording, you've got your record button here, so click that to record, vice versa to stop, that's all fine and you are OBS up. So once OBS is fully running and sitting in your background your PC, to link to your Xbox, it's pretty straightforward on Windows 10, you need to just have the Xbox uh, window here which is all, should already be there, part of Windows package. Click on that, load up your Xbox, and then you should be connected. If not, you are connected in this little part here is where you connect your Xbox. I'm currently not near my Xbox at the moment, so I can't connect to it, but straightforward. Click that, it will connect to your Xbox, and if it doesn't, you can add your Xbox to um, this system, so you could just uh, find the IP address which is go onto Xbox, Xbox settings and then network and then you'll find your IP of the device itself and then add it in here 
and you'll find it'll always be in in this window for any of you to go on so you click it on and then once that's on it'll say stream click stream and you're into your Xbox. So we're going to quickly jump into a game this is Gears of War Ultimate Edition running on OBS on the settings that I've just shown and as you can see it's absolutely fine it's not struggling at all with this at all I do think with the single player campaign though the game is 1080 30 frames per second um, I will show you a multiplayer clip in a moment of the game running in multiplayer and you can see a slight difference in gameplay but as for single player campaign OBS runs absolutely fine and no problems at all so if you want to do walkthroughs and just recording gameplay or single player then I'd really recommend get, getting OBS so as we skip through to a bit of gameplay you'll see that moving the character around in the game there's a slight hitch in the gameplay but then that's just variables like you say your process is getting worked overloaded on this type of gameplay you know again these are the um, drawbacks of using a free software you know you're not going to get 100% accurate gameplay but then it's free you can't argue with a free I mean who doesn't argue with a free capture card especially when the Algato is like say 150 pounds and that's a lot of money I and mean, a lot of people will go out and buy the Elgato the HD60 and it is it is big investment you know and you might feel a bit deflated that say you start a YouTube channel and you, you don't get a return or you know it's it's expensive and this is a good way to okay, start man, and I'd really go. recommend anyone looking to do YouTubing we'll or out. just recording I know I got a few friends that just play games and oh yeah I've done this on this game I've done that on the game and it's just nice to record that the Xbox has that record feature but it is limited to time you know you can run through a game and have the whole game on there if you want but like say it's good it's free you can't argue with that this is a small clip I did of online game play so this is running at 60 frames per second you will notice a slight difference in this though the quality is a little bit less but again it's still absolutely fine giving you that ability to record gameplay online with little to no fuss at all so yeah I'd really recommend going for the uh, OBS so to top it off for the OBS I'd say go for it get, get it. if you want to become a you know a gamer it's a great option it can you know it can help you see what you're doing on games and if you do want to become a YouTuber it's a great start it saves the uh, get the cost of buying a capture card so a really, really good free alternative so don't forget to subscribe thumbs up share and we'll see you soon